solving linear inequalities. Remember, inequalities have the greater than or greater than or equal to, less than or less than or equal to sign. So we're going to be solving some inequalities. And remember, when we solve inequalities, we're not just getting a single answer. We're getting a set of answers. And actually, when we're solving linear equalities, we're going to be getting a whole half plane of answers. We're going to see that with this first linear inequality. But remember, when we graph and shade here, we're going to follow the same, um, same procedures that we've already been following for graphing lines. We're always going to start by solving for y. So minus 2x minus 2x negative 3y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 6. But we are about to divide by negative 3. And remember, when we're dealing with inequalities, when we multiply or divide by a negative, we've got to remember to flip that sign. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 is positive 1. So there's our y. Flip that sign. It was greater than, and now it's going to be less than or equal to. A negative 2 divided by a negative 3 is positive 2 thirds x, and 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So now let's graph it. We've got a slope of 2 thirds and a y-intercept at negative 2. So up to over 3, up to over 3, down to back 3. And just like we've talked about before, if we've got an or equal to in this situation, just like we saw on the number line, we would fill in that circle. This is going to create a solid line. And notice that I'm drawing it all the way across the plane here. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to shade. We shaded on the number line. We're going to shade on the coordinate plane. And the easiest way to do this is to pick a test point. And the easiest point to pick is 0, 0. If I plug in 0, 0 into this x and this y, do we get a true statement? So let's plug in a test point right here on this index card. So here goes. Our given inequality was 2x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 6. We always go back to the given inequality to try our test point. Remember, we're plugging in 0, 0. So 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0. Is that greater than or equal to 6? We're asking a question here. So 0 minus 0, is that greater than or equal to 6? No. This is false. So if we get a false, will we shade to include 0, 0? No. We would shade away from 0, 0 because 0, 0 will not make it true. So that means that all of the points that are below the line are in the solution set that will indeed make this true. So let's pick one of those. So let's pick over 5, down 4. Let's pick 5, negative 4 and see if that does give us a true statement because I believe it will. So we're going to still continue to use the original given inequality, but this time we're going to plug in 5, negative 4. It's in the shaded area. We believe that it will make a true statement. So here goes. 2 times 5 minus 3 times negative 4. Is that greater than or equal to 6? is 10, and remember that's minus 3 and a negative 4, so that's plus 12. Yes, indeed, 22 is greater than 6, so it checks. So it makes sense that 5, 4 is in the solution set. Remember, these are inequalities. 
So every single number, or excuse me, every single point that we have shaded in in purple here will make this a true statement, as well as because of the or equal to, every single point on the line will also make it a true statement because it's greater than or equal to. So we shade all the points that will make the inequality true. That's what we're looking for, points that will make the inequality a true statement. We did not include zero, zero, because zero, zero made it a false statement. So what would it look, or how would it look differently if we were to graph 2x minus 3y is strictly less than 6? So I'm changing it from greater than or equal to to strictly less than. So let's solve for y just like we did previously. Minus 2x minus 2x negative 3y is less than negative 2x plus 6. Divide by negative 3 just like we did in the last problem. And remember if we are multiplying or dividing by negative we got to flip that sign. So y is strictly greater than positive 2 thirds x minus 2. So this is our inequality. Let's graph it. We still have a slope of 2 thirds. That has not changed. We still have a y-intercept at 0, negative 2. So let's graph this inequality. This time, remember, it's strictly greater than. So up to over three, down to back three. But this time when we graph it, it will not be solid. Just like on the number line, if it were strictly less than, strictly greater than, it would be an open circle. We can't do an open line, but we can do a dashed or sometimes called broken line. So there's our line that is dividing our plane into two half planes. So once again, let's choose 0, 0. It's always the easiest thing to plug in. And let's see if 0, 0 will make this a true statement or a false statement. So here's our original inequality. And we are going to plug in 0, 0. Will 0, 0 make it true this time? So we flipped our sign from less than to greater than. So 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0. Is that less than 6? Is 0 minus 0 less than 6? Yes. This time we get a true. And remember, we shade all the points that will make the inequality true. So if 0, 0 will make it true, it means that this time, instead of shading down, we're going to shade up. And we are going to include the point zero, 0, in our shaded half plane. So how are the graphs different? Well, first of all, the first graph was a solid line because of the or equal to sign. The second graph is a broken or dashed line. So broken or dashed, whatever you want to call it, and that is because this is strictly less than, no or equal to here. So that's one way that they are different. So we've got solid versus dashed. And then in the first graph, we ended up shading below in order to include the point that would make the inequality true. And in the second graph, we shaded upwards in order to satisfy that inequality as well. So that's the way that they are different. And what I really wanted you to see here, top one is a solid line, bottom one is a broken line, because the broken or dashed is only going to be when it's strictly less than or strictly greater than. So we've got two more graphs here. So let's graph and shade. So 4x minus 2y greater than or equal to 10. Minus 4x minus 4x 
negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 10. Again, we are about to divide by negative 2. And when we multiply or divide an inequality by a negative, we have to flip that inequality sign. So y will now be less than or equal to positive 2x minus 5. So since it is less than or equal to, our new line will be solid. So the y-intercept is at negative 5 and the slope is 2. Solid line because of the or equal to and remember, draw the line nice and long with arrows on the end. We're going to plug in a test point at zero, zero. Do we get a true? Do we get a false? So let's check it out. I think we've got enough room right here. Is 4 times 0 minus 2 times 0, is that greater than or equal to 10? Remember, we're going to plug it back into the original given inequality. Is 0 minus 0 greater than or equal to 10? Is 0 greater than or equal to 10? No, it's false. And if it is false, we will shade in the opposite direction and not include the test point. So we will shade below the line. So all of the points in this shaded area will make it true. Last graph is y is less than 4. Now this inequality is already solved for y, but it is a special line if you recall. Um, could I rewrite this in slope-intercept form? I actually could. I could change it to y is less than 0x plus 4, because if I add um, a 0 to any equation or inequality, it will not change the value. And now maybe you can see it a little bit better. We have a y-intercept at 4 and a slope of 0, or you can even think of it as 0 over 1. So what type of line does not rise? Well, let's see. If we start at 0, 4, which is our y-intercept, and go up 0 over 1, up 0 over 1, it does appear that we are graphing a horizontal line. Now, will the line be solid or broken? It is strictly less than, so that will be a broken or dashed horizontal line. Kind of like something like this. Remember to get all the way across that graph paper because we're looking to see which half plane contains our answers. So here's our test point, zero, zero. And we don't have really any spot to plug in the zero into the original equation, but we can just ask the question, is zero less than four? Is that a true statement? Yes, it is a true statement. So we are going to shade down to include the point zero, zero. And once again, all of the points in the shaded area will make our inequality a true statement.